Ooh, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode 150. Jesus Christ, J Mac. You ever think we get to 150? Yeah, but I didn't think it would take this long. Yeah, no shit, right? Welcome to 150 of the Monday Night Wars. I am Chad, and joining me as always is J Mac Gaming. Um, we're back, boys. For we're real. We're back, boys. Yes, and this for time we are real. for real. Listen, if we don't, if we stop after the third comeback, you can officially call this done. I think that's fair. <laughs> no, we ain't ever leaving this shit rolling into TW 2024. Exactly, exactly. But uh, yeah, this is the 150th episode of the Monday, of Monday Night Nitro, and yeah, I think I'm ready to roll it, buddy. What do you What do you think? You think we should oh, roll the show? I'm ready. Chad, are you ready? I well, I just said I'm ready. So type one in the chat if you're ready. Yes, yes, and subscribe to J Max OnlyFans. <laughs> Let's run the show. You already know the tradition, Chad. My yes, pre-show, we... my pre-show match. In uh, a terrible pre-show match. All right, that's what you think. Uh, hardcore balls defeats Hammer with a Michinoku driver. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> hardcore balls Mahoney going hardcore. <laughs> He's got something to prove. <laughs> he watched some New Japan tapes in the back. <laughs> Jesus Christ! How popular is Balls Mahoney? He's not. <laughs> That's that's something to look for. <laughs> um, so before we get onto uh, the next match, uh, we were going through the roster because it's been that long, and just looking at the fucking gimmicks and names we gave people. Oh man, Bobby one Eden Pan. One, one, I was gonna say one in particular popped J Mac. You saw Chef Psychosis again, and just oh, I forgot oh, about man. Big Daddy Chavo. <laughs> And Big Daddy Chavo. I don't even remember why they called him Big Daddy Chavo, to be oh, honest. Oh, let's just go. Move on. Oh, here, Chad, tell me about your pre-show. So, these two were not booked, um, and they're two hell of a worker, so I decided to give them a match on the pre-show. So, Davy Boy Smith defeated Six um, with a running power slam. Sick. What a match. Yes. All right, we move on. So, the show starts off. Eric Bischoff comes out with a 100 promo, and he says, So... Last week I came out here and I apologized to all of you fans about the hiatus we took. And then in typical Nitro fashion, <laughs> we took another hiatus. So here I am again to apologize for yet another hiatus. And to make it up for you, I decided to make this Nitro a, a, a banger. We're not going to have the Truth Commission, all right? We're not going to have, you know... The shitty show that the Monday Night uh, Raw is going to have. We are having three championship matches tonight. We're going to have the Dudley Boys taking on the Road Warriors in a hardcore match for the tag titles. We're going to have the television championship being defended. Raven will defend the television championship. And we're going to have the global championship, Eddie Guerrero versus Jushin Liger in our main event. It's going to be a good show. And why are we? And why is it going to be a good show? Because Uncle Eric cares about all of you, and that's the promo. Hell yeah, Uncle Eric is back, baby. Uncle Eric is back. Tell me about this match, Chad. I am not. I'm not seeing it on my screen yet. Well, that's, so. that's not good, Chad. Oh, here we go. Okay, I just got. It now. I, just, I just got it now. I just got it now. So, a six-man cruiserweight tag team uh, tag team match. AJ Styles, Drago, and Rey Mysterio defeated Christopher Daniels, Homicide, and of course, Big Daddy Chavo. Um, when AJ Styles defeated Christopher Daniels with a roll up. So, yeah. The newcomer, AJ Styles, getting a roll-up by Christopher Daniels. I just, To be honest with you, I wanted to get AJ Styles a match on the card, and um, I don't know how well he would do um, just by himself. Um, so I decided to put him with two good workers of Drago and Rey Mysterio. Um, and yeah, so that happened. Big Daddy Chavo. Yes. Uh, homicide the weak link, um, which really isn't that bad. No, all three of these. I, I mean, I think all six of these workers are pretty reliable. I think, besides, I guess homicide, but he didn't even there. do that bad. Dra Drago had a sixty already. He's pretty surprised. What did AJ? Did AJ have a sixty? AJ had a sixty. Oh, AJ fucking Styles, man! I'm so fucking excited to use AJ Styles. All right, let's move on. So we go to commercial. We come back, and AJ Styles is in is in the locker room, and he's you know he's there like. He's not celebrating. He's, like, having some water, like, listening to some music. Kind of, kind of doing his own celebration after his match. And then Steven Regal taps him on the back, and AJ turns, and he goes, Hello there, 
Oh, I'm Stephen Regal. <laughs> That's my terrible British accent. I wasn't. And, <laughs> and and AJ, yeah, it wasn't at all. AJ Styles turns around and 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 says, you know, nice to meet you. I'm AJ. And and Stephen says, you know, I liked what I seen out there, and I really think, you know, if you if you had the right uh, individual take you under their wing and teach you the ropes, I think you have the potential to be something spectacular. And luckily for you, I. Steven Regal, I'm going to be that man. And then he puts his arm around AJ and says, let's have a chat. And then they walk out of the locker room. So Steven Regal taking AJ Styles under his wing. That's a, that's a, hmm, interesting. It's an interesting tag, a, a, a tandem. That's an interesting tandem for sure. Chad, tell me about this match right here. All right, well, soon, okay, so... Uh, Raven is defending the television championship, and he comes out, and uh, he, he actually said right before this that uh, he was gonna—he didn't care who came out, it's whoever, whatever, whatever uh, guy wants to step up and make a name for himself and try to prove that they can uh, hang. Come challenge Raven for the television title, and Mike Awesome accepts that challenge. So for the first time ever, Raven versus Mike Awesome, and it got a 76, and Raven defeated Mike Awesome. Um, but Ray, but Mike Awesome did have a good showing. So. Yeah, Raven hit him with the pile driver. Uh, the, the match got the crowd hotter. Um, oh yeah, it did. Decent little match. Raven eighty. Mike Awesome is sixty four. Yes. There you go. Booking, playing with the big boys. Mike Awesome, welcome. And then Raven grabbed a oh, microphone. Oh my god. And then <laughs> Raven grabs. Well, a I microphone. booked this for you, and I forgot <laughs> it happened. Raven grabs a microphone, and he says, first, at first he says. Because Mike, Mike Awesome's going uh, on his way down the ramp, sell, uh, selling his injuries, uh, walking, heading back to the back. And Raven says, Mike, Mike. And Mike turns around and, and he says, you really impressed me. Good job. And then Mike Awesome just, you know, kind of does like a, a nod of like respect. And then he walks to the back and then Raven says, guys like Mike Awesome, those are the future of this company. Those are the guys we should be getting behind, and those are the guys who should be getting opportunity. Unlike Billy Kidman, a man who jumps people from behind and likes to run his mouth and likes to try to make a name off of me. Well, Kidman, I'm sick of it, all right? Me and you, we've been going back and forth here for weeks, all right? You left the flock, and you thought you were better than me, and you've been trying to prove it. Well, guess what? You finally have the opportunity to prove it, Kidman, because at Fall Brawl, me versus you. Fall Brawl? For the, super or, Brawl. For, for Super Brawl. <laughs> for Super Brawl. It's the middle of February. It's not the fall. <laughs> for Super <laughs> Brawl, me versus you for the television championship. And let me tell you something, Kidman. You will not beat me because I am. And then he gets cut off by Lex Luger and Sid Vicious. They come down to the ring. And Lex Luger goes, Raven, 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 Raven. Did I hear you say Mike Awesome should be getting opportunities here? Did I have you? Did I hear you say that you and Kidman are fighting for the television championship? Do you forget who held those championship that championship before you? It was the Total Cable Package. All right, and we want a rematch for that championship as well. So how about this, Raven? How about instead of you facing Kidman for the belt? You put your money where your mouth is, and you face the two of us at Super Brawl instead. And Raven says, listen, I'm not afraid to fight anybody. I'll never back down from a challenge, so I'll do you one better, all right? I'll face both of you, and I'll face Kidman. It's going to be a four-way at Super Brawl for this television championship. And Sid Vicious says, that's all fine and dandy, Raven. And we accept the challenge, but next week... We're challenging you to a tag team match. You can go find a partner, and you're going to challenge the total cable package, and we're going to make sure you don't make it to Super Brawl. And then Mike Awesome comes back out, and he says that he'll be Raven's tag team partner. So next week we're getting Mike Awesome and Raven versus Lex Luger and Sid Vicious. Ooh. Speaking of tag team... Yes. Um, okay, so we have our, our our second championship match of the night. The Dudleys, after teaming, after facing the Road Warriors last week, um, they they asked 
for they asked Eric Bischoff for a championship match, and uh, Eric Bischoff gave it to him. And they faced them in a hardcore match. We had to work our way around it because famously TNT does not like hardcore matches, so we had to basically just make one uh, a new match type. Good thing you booked a whole stable of hardcore boys. Yeah, right. No shit. Uh, but the Dudleys actually went with an upset. They beat the Road Warriors, and they won the WCW Nitro Tag Team Titles. And both Road Warriors were happy to do it. And Sting did interfere. So <laughs> throw that at the end. Uh, yeah. Sting uh, in terms of in ring work, uh, Hawk by far the best. And you're welcome because yes. I I pushed Hawk to the fucking. You know, you, you, yeah, you pushed him. You pushed him. You were you were teach you were treat, you were treating the Road Warriors very strong, but they decided to come to greater pastures. So animals complaining that he doesn't want to be in hardcore matches. Okay, noted. A hawk as well. Okay, noted. It's crazy because they still got good performances even in a hardcore match. Well, that's because they're fucking awesome. <laughs> All right, you move on to the next segment. So Sting and the Dudley Boys are in the ring with Elizabeth, of course, celebrating the Dudley's tag team championship win. And Sting grabs a microphone and he says, What did I tell ya? You working with Sting, you watching my back, and I watch yours. You guys are the tag team champions. And it was because I helped you. Just remember, you two would be nothing without me. All right? I am the icon, and you two will be icons because you're associated with me. And he says, Now just remember that. At Super Brawl, when I get my match against Goldberg, and not only will I be the one that ends Goldberg's streak, but I will be the next WCW heavyweight champion. And it's only a, a matter of time because Goldberg is slipping. Goldberg is not the same Goldberg that he was when he uh, when he went into Starcade and won that championship. He's slipping. He's cracking. I'm getting in his head. I know that. And I will wear him down, and he will not be ready to go. At Super Brawl. And then Goldberg's music hits and Goldberg grabs a microphone and he says, The only thing that's going through my head is the thought of me spearing you, Sting, and then hitting you with a jackknife in the middle of the ring and beating you and retaining my championship. The only thing going through my head is how much I would love to walk down that ring and kick all three of your asses right now. You think you're going to beat me at Super Brawl? This isn't even going to be... A, a, a minute long match. I'm going to walk in there and I'm going to spear you so hard the face paint's going to jump off your head. There's nothing you can do to beat me because there's nothing anybody in this company has done to beat me. I have proven day in and day out that I am the greatest wrestler going today. No one, no one, not in WCW, not in ECW, not in WWF can hold a candle to me. They got some fat guy in a mask on the other show saying that WCW can't hang, saying that WCW isn't the best. Well, let me tell you something. I'll spear him too, all right? Maybe that dumb mask will fall off his head. There's nothing anyone can do. And then as he's saying that, he gets jumped from behind by a man wearing a hoodie, and you can't see his face. And then he takes the helmet off. He, his helmet. He takes his hood off, and it's Rick, <laughs> and it's Rick Steiner. And Sting grabs a microphone, and he, he gets his microphone, and he says, Once again, Goldberg, I'm in your head, and I will always outsmart you. Our group just gained one more bad, bad, bad man. And then he picks up Goldberg and hits him with a Steiner recliner. No. Oh. So we move on to the next segment? Yes, which then leads us uh, to a <laughs> backstage promo. Kidman's there. He's got a microphone. And he says, first off, Raven, I just want to let you know I accept your challenge at Super Brawl. I will beat you, and I will become the WCW television champion. And he says, I don't know what Lex Luger and Sid Vicious were doing, getting involved in my business, making this a four-way, but that's fine. I'll beat them too. I'm going to beat everybody. He says, and I, and, I hope, and I hope you and Mike Awesome win your tag team match next week, Raven, because I know I'll be watching very, very very closely next segment I think I fucking unorganed there we go say I fucked it up that's fine that's fine <laughs> we go back so while, while that was happening uh, they made a match for Goldberg versus Rick Steiner and Goldberg wins in 10 minutes with a spear that's it 
you know, uh, um, a quick match. So, uh, done the breaks, you know. Uh, so this is the first. So Teddy Long is now officially managing the Hardy Boys. Teddy Long said, "Let me holla at you, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll make you guys go from a good tag team to a great tag team." Because of course, they have one goal, and it is to regain their tag team championships that the Road Warriors took from them. So this is their first match uh, with Teddy Long as their manager, and they beat Bobby Eaton, Pancakes, and Chef Psychosis. It got a 69, nice, and yeah. Uh, Bobby Eaton, Pancakes, Weak Link, and Jeff Hardy. Uh, fucking, if that reads right, an 82? Hell uh, yeah, um, brother. He had a fucking good day, it looks like. He had a good day in the office. Especially with Matt Hardy being injured. Jeff Hardy had to step up, and he did. And he did. He did. We move on to uh, this. So, Mortis, was from one good match to one not-so-good match, uh, Mortis defeated Hurricane uh, with a choke slam. It was a squash. Um, so, yep. And then Mortis is in the ring and he's just beating down Hurricane. Just, you can go to the next segment. Just beating down Hurricane, laying him out. And, uh, then the lights, the lights go off and we hear a voice over the, uh, over the, the arena. And he says, Mortis. And then Mortis is looking around and everyone recognizes the voice. It's, it's Chris Canyon. And he says, you thought you took care of me? You thought you took my soul? Mortis, you didn't take anything. You strike me down, and I will always come back. More powerful than you could ever imagine. And then Mortis is like looking around, and his manager's looking around, and they're both just like looking for him. <clears throat> and then you see him in the crowd, and the crowd is excited. There's like a spotlight on him, and he's in the crowd, and he's just looking. He's just staring at him. And the manager's freaking out, and Mortis is like getting all amped up. But then the lights go off again, and they come back, and they come back, and he's not there. And they go, "Where's Where's Chris Canyon?" And they come back on again, and he's on the opposite side of the arena. The fans are like freaking out. Mortis is freaking out, and, and Chris Canyon says, "You're not the only one, Mortis, who can play mind games. You're not the only one that can play tactical warfare." And then the lights go off again. They come back on. This time he's at the entrance ramp. Mortis is gets out of the ring and he runs down to the entrance ramp and, and, and Chris Canyon just stands there and he gets the canyon let's go off again they come back on and he's not there and this time he turns around and he's in the ring and, and, and Mortis then runs down to the ring again and and when he runs down to the ring Canyon catches him and just starts pummeling him and brawling him and they fight all around the arena and uh, eventually Mortis rolls out of the ring and actually backs down and heads to the back and Chris Canyon says, at Super Brawl, I'm going to kick your ass. It's me versus you, last man standing. Ooh. Ooh. Blown off. Welcome. Got a lot of matches booked for Super Brawl. Tell me about your co-main event right here. And our co-main event, we've got Jushin Liger. Um, and Eddie Guerrero gets announced. Eddie Guerrero comes down to the ring, and he does the same shtick he's been doing. He gets in there, and he says uh, how he's not worried about this match at all. He's not sweating it. He is the greatest wrestler alive and certainly better than anything any wrestler from Japan could ever do. And he says, you know, he represents the the proud Mexican culture and that he's just, he's just you know, they wrestled at WrestleMania. All right, WrestleMania, wow. They wow. Wrestled at, Star uh, at Starcade. And then he says, who exactly won our match at Starcade? Do you remember, Loot Lager? Oh, yeah, it was me. That's right. And then he says, and then the outcome's going to be no different. And uh, and then, yeah, and then we go to the match. We go to the main event of the night. Where? Where? Ooh, a 79. Now, I thought it was going to do a little bit better, to be honest. But um, Jushin Liger uh, versus Eddie. Eddie defeats Jushin. Um, with a frog splash, and Eddie makes defense number four of the WCW global title. Um, they showed great chemistry, and Honky Tonk Man was pretty weak at the announcing. So oh, that, Jesus that may have brought it down. Eddie had. I'm a, sure. I'm sure he was terrible. Eddie had a 98. We're gonna fix the commentary off screen. Like, you don't like Eddie? You don't like Honky Shivane? And shoot, how do you fucking say his last name? 
Shivani yeah. and Stallone. And Sylvester Stallone as your fucking announcing group? Can't say that I do. <laughs> uh, at least your head announcer didn't die. True, true. They're all alive and well. Um, so, yeah, that was... And that's the end of the show, 83. Yeah. Typical. Typical. Uh, the bad guys <laughs> won again. <laughs> well, the bad guys on Thunder, but... Oh, fuck you. The good guys won again. But yeah, guys, that was episode 150. The Hope big 150. The big 150. Um, we're booking. We're carrying on. We're back, and we are building to Super Brawl. We got a big card already, and uh, it's just gonna get even better. So, sick. Uh, make sure you uh, leave a like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Chatting Tatum One. Oh my God, you're fucking. Don't follow me at Twitter uh, at J underscore Mac Thirteen. And this has been the boys, um, the lads. The Artist Collective. Um, the Artist Collective. Um, and remember. Fuck Cody Rhodes.